Welcome back. In uh, the previous video, we took a look at simple integration testing using C Sharp. After our light introduction, we then took a, a look at a more real world example. In this video, we're going to take a look at integration testing with ASP.NET Core specifically. The video will be in the same format where we will have a light introduction with more real world example. Although the difference uh, in compared to the previous video, in the previous video, the examples were closer to unit tests, although because we're composing uh, units, it, it is already integration testing. At this point, it is closer to system testing because we're almost testing the whole system, although it is still in a very controlled environment locally, or be it in a pipeline, it is not quite system testing, although it is quite a lot of components together. Let's take a look at the application and see what we have. So in our controller here, we have uh, our animal controller. In the animal controller, we have an iAnimal service that we are injecting, as well as a simple interface, and then we have a animal that we're returning. Animal is a very simple model. We have an ID, name, and type. I couldn't get any more simpler than this. Uh, let's go ahead and write a test for it and see what tools are available to us to actually test this endpoint. What I want you to do is open up your package manager and I want you to search for MVC testing. And you should find a package called Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC testing. Take this package and just add it to your integration testing project, right? Once you have it, this will give you some classes to use. These are abstractions of your running application. So instead of doing .NET watch run, you essentially use this class in a class fixture and it will start up your application for you. In the background, you produce a client that you can call your, your API with, test it, see, make sure that it gives you back your expected results, and then you're good, All right? So let's go ahead and write some tests, see how it looks like. We'll call these animal endpoint tests. Uh, we will create a constructor where we're about to inject something. Let's go ahead and inherit from a night class fixture. If you don't know what class fixtures and collection, collection fixtures are, I suggest you watch the previous video. What we're going to do here is we're going to use one of the classes that this package we've just added provides us with, which is the web application factory. This is the class that is once it is initialized it will be a mock instance of your application, which you can make API calls to by using an HTTP client. What you have to do is you have to specify the startup class of the application that you want to start. So go, so make sure you have a reference to the project for, to, to the API or a pro, yeah, to the application that you want to start up. I'm going to go ahead and just add it like that. You can then inject this. And if you want any additional setup on this, you can straight up go, go ahead, extend this class and configure it. If you're wondering about what configuration you do, we'll cover that in a minute. Let's go ahead and call this factory. We will create a global field. We'll start with creating a fact here and we'll do something really simple. We'll just say gets animal because that is the only method we have. We're not going to go too deep. This is just learning about what web, a web application factory is. Let's go ahead and grab our factory. We will create a client. This will create us an HTTP client. I like to just call it client. On the client, we're going to get from JSON async. This is not the best idea. You will see in a second why. Uh, although maybe not from the beginning. We're going to call API animals. I know it's not correct, not per entirely collect correct uh, RESTful API design. This is just an explanation, right? So we're just going to make sure we call this endpoint. Let's go ahead, close this down. We will await this. And uh, because uh, get from JSON async automatically deserializes it, we will need to specify what we're deserializing to. So let's just make sure we specify animal and uh, the name is going to be our animal. I'm not going to go crazy on assertions. I'm just going to say uh, not null on the animal and then animal controller, uh, whatever I have in the animal service, the ID one. So that's the other thing that I'm going to check, right? So equal one animal ID. At this point, you can run your test. It will spin up your application. It will try to execute a call and then it will perform your assertions. 
I mean, this looks just like a unit test. Uh, this is the point of integration testing and Microsoft has already done the one step for you. You can see how easy your setup for mocking your whole server looks like. And you can even debug in there as well, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But at the moment we have an error. How do you check what's wrong, right? It has uh, returned a 500 inside of this. You, all right, where did this, uh, this happen here, right? Well, what do we do? How do we inspect? How do we debug this thing? Uh, because this is an extension function, it does a couple of things. Uh, what we want to do is we want to basically uh, go from a higher level of abstraction to a little bit of a lower one, not as in like bit shift operations. We're, we're just doing something a little bit simpler. So instead here, we're going to get a sync. So we actually get our HTTP response, which we can inspect. This may look cumbersome at first, but once you get used to it and once you actually iron out your setup and you're making sure you're doing the correct things, you may not need to do this. This is, this is just a debugging process that you may find useful. So let's grab a response here. We can do things like assert that equals, we'll grab the response status code and we'll compare it to okay so we are certain and then we can swap them around which we'll do first for you but it's a little bit easier to get the type this way if you're using an id but anyway at this point let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here because uh, for debugging purposes what we're going to do is we're going to go to the content and we're going to say read as string async we will bring in the content here and here we'll be able to read it and understand what is actually wrong. Uh, the rest of the stuff can stay because this is where it's going to crash. So we can comment this out. And actually, let's comment this out as well. We can then debug this test and see what is actually happening and what actual error we get back. Okay, there we go. So uh, now what we can do is we can take a look at the content and uh, take a look at this uh, actual error. And the error is really simple. No service for type services animal has been registered that's okay that's cool very easily amendable mis mis uh, mistake go to the startup services we go ahead and add a ass <laughs> uh, yeah ju just like this one over here that, that's all i think about asses uh, right animal service get your animal service in here animal service right there it is registered all good come back to your tests uh, you no longer you can keep these if you want you can go back to this notation because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it as long as your application is working. Uh, or what you can do if you want an easier time debugging your test if something does go wrong at this stage, uh, instead you can perform this same action on here. So read from JSON async is still available on the content. So uh, instead of get, you will have read from JSON async. Just remove that and you no longer need to supply the url as well you have your animal and then you can use it right you no longer need to do this probably will need to uh, juggle around but pre pretty much uh, this this is where we end up with and then we go ahead and run it and it passes so this is a very simple setup now there are going to be times when you want to be mocking the services still again as i've explained in the previous video integration testing does not mean you don't mock stuff, all right? You do the things that make you confident that your system works across all levels, all right? Where at the, at the system testing, you're just testing the whole system. Like everything has to work, but you still mock there. You still have to mock something. Now, let's say this component, the animal service is very, very, very hard to test in integration testing. We just like, we just can't. All right, it's just it's not an option, right? If you throw a million dollars at me, I won't be able to test it. It's just like, give me a hundred developers. Hopefully you get the picture. We just can't test it, right? It doesn't mean we shouldn't test any other components that rely on it. We Let's go ahead and substitute it. So at this point, what you can do is you can leverage your web application factory to uh, help you. You can say with web host builder, and this is where you're going to change or startup, you essentially grab your startup and you redefine it. So in here, we will have a, our builder. And in the builder, we can say configure services. And once we're on the services level, level 
we are in the same ballpark where we can add singletons and you know we can do stuff to it one of the simple things that you can do is if you know how dependency injection work if we just register another implementation of this the latest implementation will override the previous one okay so let's go ahead and just do that we'll create a new animal service implementation so let's go ahead and just do that here we'll bring in the interface and we'll say animal service mock and i will just and two here foo two bar two just for why not i won't want too many brackets let's register it so services add singleton i animal service and animal service mock there we go now if we have any other services that rely on this service this really hard thing to test we can just mock it still here okay and we can mock its functionality if we've already created a mock of it in our other unit test just bring it in pop it in here no big right reuse the things that you have uh, but generally you don't want uh, one, te uh, one test depending on other tests so you need to think a little bit of how you're going to share these classes between each other so anyway uh, here we have our mock uh, you could probably use mock queue implementation by uh, doing something like uh, mock object and supplying your implementation right here right you're gonna have the service provider you can do something like that but generally now what we're going to do is we're going to say right this is actually should be two because we've mocked it and it should return a different result now right hopefully you get the picture you can do other things like going into services you can find single ones where you have service type that will equal something along the lines of type i animal service so we go ahead find this uh, service uh, this uh, what's it called animal service and we can go ahead and remove this animal service from here okay so you can do a thing uh, uh, as going as far as taking services removing them from your pi from your services altogether if you need to do that as well okay just be aware that door is open uh, later on i'm going to show you uh, how that tactic actually uh, looks like when we'll go to mocking cookie authentication and one of the services i showed for my mocking examples now uh, let's take a look at a more real world example that maybe some of you will find more useful uh, i am going to close all of this and we're going to go over the file controller and the file settings so here you can see in the file settings, I just have some kind of path. And then in the file controller, I inject my iOptions monitor. I have my web host environment here. And uh, we then just go ahead and save a file to the web, web root path. So the www root folder plus the path. Uh, the path is already specified here in files. So I'm going to show you how you can, uh, uh, you know, change that. We check if it, uh, the directory exists. If not, we create it. So st standard stuff, but in the end, just understand we just save a file. Similar to the animal endpoint controller, let's just create a file endpoint tests. And in here, we will just go ahead and animal endpoint tests. Grab this setup. Bring it here, because why not? Delete one of these, uh, bring the other stuff. We won't need to do all of this configuration. We should be okay with the basics for now. So once we have this, let's also create our public void uh, saves file to disk, right? So we're gonna send a file to this endpoint. It's gonna be this iform file interface and we're gonna be grabbing it from form. Let's go ahead, <laughs> spin up our client. This is, uh, you know, this interface really makes things really easy for you. We will have our client. We now want to post async. We're not posting JSON. This is going to be a multi-form form. Okay. We're going to go to API files. I believe that, let me close these tests. I believe that is the endpoint, API files. We post it and then we post. All right. And then we want the form. So create uh, HTTP content. This will be a multi-part form data content. 
we can then let's close this off and we'll just grab the response here we then can go on the form and add uh, yeah okay yeah, hold on because internally multi-part form data content inherits from multi-part content and then that is HCP content which is what we are expecting in the post async okay so we can either delete that thing or this thing but now what we should do is we should have add available to us where we supply some kind of content so if you have strings and stuff like that as part of the form you can do stuff like string content new string content or in our case it will be string content because we're uploading a file so let's create a new stream content here we will need to input our stream uh, the name of the path is file so we are going to gonna just say file and then the third parameter it will be the name of the file so in our case I have this base PNG I'm gonna call it the same base.png and now for my test what I need to do is I need to lift this file and upload it if You've ever done anything like this before what is going what's what's going to happen to your application is it when it builds and it runs it's going to be packaged up into this build directory and it's going to be run from here so what you want to make sure is that your file is available in this folder to do this and this is possible in visual studio as well you right click you go to properties on your file whichever one you want to use for mocking and what you need to do is make sure you copy to output directory copy always and you press ok we can then verify that this works by commenting out any comment that does, any code that doesn't build we then build our code and recheck the folder and now the base.png should be in here okay uh, that's that now you just go ahead and create some sort of a function that will you know give you back your stream so this is probably going to be async task uh, stream and this you want this to be a reusable function as well so get test image i'm going to keep it in this test class although you know you want to lift it to somewhere like utils or mocks uh, whatnot make it async safe and stuff like that because multiple tests are going to try to pick it up or if you have a or you if you load it in a fixture that you use only in one class or in one collection you know you don't need it async safe but for this i'm not gonna uh, you know worry too much here we're gonna open read here and we will just grab the base png file here we'll have the file stream here and uh, i think it's better to do something along the lines of this just uh, as a to give you an idea of w what's better to do so you you open kind of like a pipe to your disk you load it in memory and your and now it sits in your application rather than keeping this pipe open to your disk and like uh, you know if one thing tries to read from there and then you're sort of passing this pipe around uh load it into memory and they just kind of like drag it around with you rather than so you know like oh, 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 you'll grab from there you, you don't don't do that just load it up into memory stream and then you can go ahead and discard this while you just return the memory stream and again if you have uh, multiple things calling this function you may want to put a semaphore here or if you're loading different images you know if you, depending on what you're doing you want to make sure it's concurrent uh, async safe and by the end like, let's see, add string close we then go ahead grab our image so get test image we put it here you can create a variable if you want you don't need to again whatever makes you feel more confident anyway uh, as for a simple real world example this is kind of what's happening here we are just uploading a image one of the symptoms that we're looking for is it's gonna return okay so let's assert equal response status let's compare it to oh it's a task at the moment let's wait on this status code we're looking for okay swap it around and some people may be okay with just having this let's go ahead and run this and see if it works so it looks like it worked if we take a look at the ww folder it may look slightly empty for me writer just doesn't load it straight away if i do look inside of it it does contain the image that we've just uploaded so now yeah so it kind of it lags a little bit behind but 
files also may be your local development. So you want, you know, you sometimes maybe you want to mock it. So at the moment, this path have been loaded from the file settings here, which we have in the app settings. Using the previous method for mocking, we can also, you know, change the directory where it's putting these files. Another way that you can assert something here is you can do, because we have static files enabled, you can go ahead and use the client to verify that the image is there now. So if we would have done something along the lines of get async on file slash base.png, I would then expect uh, to hit this file and be able to file response, grab this and assert equal response status code. Okay, sort this round and there we go. So you can go ahead, delete that, run this and you can see it uh, comes back with okay. Because if we then go ahead and try to fetch a file that is not there, it will give us a not found, which is pretty reasonable, right? So this is how you can confirm that you're indeed not only making a successful call, the backend actually does the thing that you've asked it. It's write to disk, write your file to disk, right? Let's go ahead and do a substitution of the path. So when we save the file here, we may not want it in a files directory. We may want it in a test directory. The same way that in our startup, we use configure to basically we change, we configure this file settings object with the op I options pattern. We, let's go ahead, copy this. We will not in the file, in this endpoint controller. Again, use the web host builder where we will have the builder. In the builder, we have configure services. Again, this brings us back into the ballpark where we can rearrange our startup and our services here. We can actually, I just copied the line. So let's bring it in here, have the file settings. If you have already previously configured, you have the file settings instance that you have, you, that, you have that you can work with. In here, you can just set it to test, I don't know, underscore images, and then make sure to amend your test as well. So this is where you're, this is the path that you're gonna be looking in now. Let's go ahead and run our test here. Passes successfully. If we take a look at the folder, we have test images here and we have our image. Now, it sucks to be deleting the file all the time. Again, the tactic I've explained in the previous episode of using IA sync lifetimes, uh, the interface that X unit provides you with, you, you're not limited by this web application factory here. Extend it, make your own setups. So let's go ahead and do that. We will create a file testing fixture. Okay. We will then go grab this class, come back here, inherit from it, make sure we get our imports. We can then also inherit iAsync uh, lifetime interface, bring this in. And now we have a synchronous way to set up our test. We bring in our default setup here. Let's put it somewhere here. Make sure again, we got our imports. We can put our prop of stream file here. So we can, we can just call this private and load the file at the end here. So as this is getting set up again, remember that async lifetime is an X unit interface, the testing framework. So the testing framework is going to call these two functions. So here's where we want to, uh, you know, kind of bring stuff into memory. And here's where we want to do any cleanup. Okay. So this is why it may be important to say, right, we're going to save all the files into this folder. So then we can reliably clean up this folder after every test. So we can run it multiple times on our environment, right? So let's go ahead and uh, see how this is going to look. Let's await on get test image. Make sure this is a asynchronous here. Oh, uh, looks uh, like I have, uh, what's it called? Let's rename this to test file. This is actually file namespace, right? 
This can be a private setter, so just in case we don't override it from the test, we now take the file test fixture and we actually place it in this test. This will be the thing that we're injecting now. For the rest of the stuff, instead of uh, get test image, we can actually, yeah, let's go ahead and inject our file testing fixture here. We're gonna get some errors, but that doesn't matter. From the factory, we can get our test file. And uh, because we're calling this on the original class, the class itself has this method to be, we can basically override a method to achieve the same setup. So let's go ahead and uh, the method specifically is called, uh, if I control uh, insert override members, it's called configure web host. And here we also have a builder, so we can just nicely, not grab the whole function, but whatever is happening to it, get rid of it with web host builder, delete this bit and place our builder configuration here. Make sure we grab our imports and that's pretty much it. Now we ideally want to do a cleanup. So in our file controller, how we basically determine the save path by using the path here and the web root path. Let's go ahead and grab this file save path resolution logic. If it's in some other class, we can bring that class in here. Hopefully you get the picture. Uh, the test setting path, we can replace it with something that we know we're gonna have. Let's assign this to private string cleanup path, or we can call it default test file save path, uh, uh, whatever. This can be a field, it's a private field. Our tests themselves may not need to know it if they do expose it. Uh, let's save it here. Now we needed to get our hands on the environment here. Because we actually have our services or service container available to us, Nose is a very itchy. Instead of create, you call build service provider. And if you watch my previous video videos, you've probably seen me do this a couple of times. We create the scope on the service provider. We make sure we're using it. And um, using, call it scope and we get our required service of type iWeb host environment. Make sure we get it here, call it env. At this point, we're gonna have our clean path. Let's clean it up, right? Oh, new directory info, you know how it goes. You can't just delete a directory if you have files in it. You need your directory info. And then uh, you need to get the files. Don't get me started on performance uh, files. I probably not this. Uh, I want a for loop, uh, not that for loop. Come on, dude. For each. There we go. All right. Call delete. And then directory delete the directory itself, right? So we. Clean up the directory if you have paths or if you basically, if you have directories within directories, you you, know, you, you need a little bit of, you know, uh, brain uh, usage to uh, how you're gonna take care of cleaning it up. But that's basically, that's basically it, right? Get our file, do some setup for our application. So we create like a slight extension where we tinker with it. We say, right, instead of usually saving to the usual place, save it to this other place where we know stuff is going to be ending up and we can just wipe it at the end. And then we say, right, where are you actually going to be? We extract some information from it. We mock a little bit. Uh, yeah, we, I already said we grab a file. And then once we run our test, we clean it up. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. And maybe we will be actually able to see where it's... Maybe, nope, too fast. Uh, let's take a look. So, I mean, we get a success. Uh, the directory is empty. I'm gonna run it again, see if we can see anything happen here. No, maybe too fast. Fast, but yeah. Hopefully you get the picture. We save the file, we upload the file, we save the file, we check that the file is uploaded and that it's actually saved by calling this and rely on the use static imports function if you are serving it from a controller all the controller endpoint. Further videos will explain how to handle authentication, maybe in a more graceful way, mocking it, you know, stuff like that. Just a few more ideas and 
really arming you with maybe a bit of an exploration process of how you can come up with your own methods to test your application logic. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. Any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section or leave them on my Discord server. I also stream on Wednesdays and Sundays. Make sure to join in. Come say hi. I've opened up a store now. Link is in the description. If you would like to support me, don't just donate. Buy something from the shop. Get something in return. Have a good day. Hopefully, I'll see you in my other videos.